Welcome to Pod Ligamous, the Sister Wives Rewatch Podcast. We sit down each week and recap an episode of TLC's longest running reality show, Following the Browns, a Mormon polygamous family originating in Lehigh, Utah. I'm Samantha Kaiser. And I'm Haley Graff. And this is Pod Ligamous, Season 2, Episode 7. Great. It's the Christmas episode. Mm hmm. It's real, um,. I don't know. It's real, like it really elicits some some kind of like Christmas movie emotions of like the drama, the backdrop of like why they have to do this, and like and like also the cozy cabin thing. Like it's very like cinematic. I felt it was, and I thought, uh-huh. well, first off, like one of the first scenes, and I thought you would really love this, is like all the kids playing in the snow, and then Savannah looks so damn cute playing in the snow. <laughs> I miss that. Oh my gosh, um, you need to go back and rewatch the beginning of it because it was so oh, cute. I will. Like it was very classic kids playing in the snow, but then Savannah's like rolling a snowball for like a snowman oh. or whatever. It was very cute. She is so cute. Uh, the thing that I took note of was Gwendolyn doing a snow angel with just her whole bare head in the snow. And I was like, I would be screaming crying if I were like she's just like unbothered. I'm like, right? I would have been I would have been going inside if my head if my bear Head just buried in the snow like, like that. A hat and no, don't just like <laughs> nothing. Not even the, the hood kind of like guards the whole back of your head if yeah. you pop it up. Nope, just all the hair in the snow. I was like, you're tougher than me. Right. I would have been stuck. head freeze there, but <laughs> um. So I guess I was too busy distracted by that. True. Mm-hmm. Um. So this is titled the Brown Family Decision, which is like appropriate it's kind of has to do with like the legal things going on and it is very dramatic and cinematic with the christmas if there's something like any kind of bad or negative or like spooky thing going on mixed with christmas it just has such a a vibe right like something about that something about that you like know, look at look at the home alone the movie like mm-hmm. we've got some real yep. dangerous criminals going after a child <laughs> but that also holiday magic so it's just it just it it strikes a certain chord in me (laughs) um and then the description which is also they really dropped the ball in the last few descriptions like i feel like the season started out strong with some good info this one was just a decision is revealed that will affect the family the family's lives once again like there's a lot more happening than just that in this episode (laughs) But okay. Yeah, they so. had the first like two, three episodes. They did really well with their fun descriptions, uh-huh. and then they just kind of fell off. So hmm. yeah, they fired the intern. I guess I don't know. All right. Yeah. Good choice, TLC. <laughs> so here, there's a mystery involved in this episode too that we've that we've like I watched this just following last week's episode just because it came on my phone like you know automatically. It just started running the next episode, so I watched like half of this last week and then I rewatched it like yesterday Mm -hmm. or two days ago and we talked we both talked about a scene involving christmas tree shopping and i was like yes saw that the first time i'm gonna go back and watch it go back and watch it i fast forwarded rewinded searched scrubbed this episode could not find this christmas tree shopping scene again i don't know if i had a different version i don't know what happened i mean that was like a decent chunk of the episode i feel like of them at least Mm -hmm. the first part it was like in the first 10 minutes they showed it in like the like coming up on Sister Wives, but then like it never actually. And I know I watched it because I get the the bearded, cute like tree guy. I like know exactly what you're talking about, and then like I just it just vanished. So I don't know. Maybe they get maybe I got like signed out, and it's like some different version. You know what I mean? I mystery. So you're gonna have to guide that part of the conversation because I got nothing. That's so my weird. Memory. <laughs> yeah, that's weird as hell. So. If anyone had the same experience watching it, let us know. Please share. If you also watched it twice, please let me know. If you watched it twice for some reason. (laughs) Um, Is that where we start off then? Or... Um, I mean, yeah, kind of, because they're like, they're going, they announce they're going to the cabin for the holidays, Mm -hmm. and everyone's stressing the hell out because the prosecutor, like, put out a statement about the Browns, and he was like, oh, um, the Browns have made it pretty easy admitting to a felony on national television so we're going to have a decision about this in 60 to 90 days and i'm not sure what kind of decision he i mean decision of whether or not to to charge them i guess with polygamy yeah but so they're all very stressed about that statement coming out and they just want to go to the cabin and have a getaway and not think about it as much as possible 
Yeah, that was a real, like, they show on the screen the, like, blurb from that article, and it's actually really, like, so- very menacing sounding. Yeah. And like, oh, yeah, they made it really e- easy for us to admit their felonies on national TV, so. Right. Like, we're, we have, like, a bone to pick now or something. It was just very, like, yeah. Yeah, like, delicious. you can tell, I mean, I don't know, you can, you get the vibe that, like, the prosecutor then was feeling, like, personally insulted by them being yeah. polygamous on TV. And it's, like, it's not anything really to do with you at all. Like, it's no. their own personal <laughs> family decision. And then please don't make that about you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it was unsettling. And I understand why. You know, I think even they are kind of fight- going back and forth between, like, is this actually an issue or is it not? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because we kind of had that, kind of, like, how dramatic is this really? We kind of, are, is it for the show? Or are we kind of mm-hmm. hyping? But that article, like, doesn't leave much question about whether or not they're like legitimately under some sort of threat yeah prosecuting Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's Um, that's a real bummer for them right around the holidays but they're gonna try to celebrate i guess and not think about get away from it all yeah into this cabin so they're Um, it was i thought it was cute all the kids they're like drawing all the names for christmas um so each of the kids give each other a gift like they pick you know a kid for it and then garrison's like also having four moms equals four extra presents <laughs> they were like yep okay garrison yep you got it <laughs> so the so i missed that do the all the moms get all the kids a gift i think so holy cow yeah because like mary's That's doing so her like sewing all their pajamas right and i think all the other moms <laughs> like do a gift individually for the kids but then the kids don't give every single person a gift they just yeah. pick one kid to give another gift to that is that is reasonable but the, even the moms having to give 17 ki- or 16 kids a gift is a, a lot like has mary just been sewing all year because <laughs> that's so they kind of each uh i'm i'm concerned that my timeline is different from yours because this is some weird other version of oh my episode, goodness, but this is gonna be weird <laughs> i know so like if i skip over something like just i'll bring you back like plug in yeah, we'll just we'll figure it out. But the first kind of big conversation I have on my notes is about each wife's kind of Christmas tradition that they bring into the family. Mm-hmm. Um, Janelle makes breakfast for the family. She's got the easiest kind of like least involved job. Right. Good for you. Classic. Mary makes <laughs> Mary makes everyone pajamas. And this is something that does carry on. I know later seasons we see it again and again. And I'm just like, as someone who like sews as a novice, like that is so much work yeah no pun intended that is so much work <laughs> so like much. i she literally must start in january right and she's so like for all right year. new year starting the pjs for the end of the year crazy i was like and she said she started it when mariah was two and then it just carried on i'm like yeah when mariah was two there was like four kids right <laughs> like that makes sense but oh my yeah gosh. like that's an easy enough thing to do throughout the course of the year for four kids if you're good at sewing mm-hmm. but multiply that by four again and then now there's what three more after that i don't know just it's a lot. yeah it's like exponential growth <laughs> of like yeah. pajamas um and christine celebrates saint lucia's day it's a um, swedish thing i did look into it because i it didn't ring a bell i think of saint lucia i think of it isn't that like a city in jamaica or something it's like a trap or tropical place but i did a quick little google and it is like a scandinavian and italian mostly holiday that's celebrated on the 13th of december to honor saint lucy or saint lucia uh, of syracuse who brought christians hiding in roman catacombs uh food wearing a crown or a candle lit wreath to light her way and to me that makes me think of the american girl doll Kristen, <laughs> who had a cos- uh, an outfit you could buy for $1,000 that had a little St. Lucia's crown. I didn't have that doll, but I remember seeing it in the catalog. Was she? Yeah, I guess. I remember seeing it in the catalog. Like, mm-hmm. so she must have been, like, I can't, I can't remember Lucia. Kristen's story, I guess. Well, they're all Amer- American, but, like, I think she's a... She must be from, like, Scandinavia, like, immigrant, though. Heritage. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. she's blonde, so... And she has little, like, loop-de-loop braid pigtails, yeah. too. Yeah. Like, the little handles. Yeah. <laughs> you could grab them. Uh, oh, she's in Minnesota. Didn't know that. Oh, so she has to be, like, she'd be, like, Norwegian, then, or something. Yeah. Nor- that's, that's, like, the 
the main thing over there. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. So, anyways, I was I hadn't heard of it referred to as St. Lucia's Day, but it's like all, I guess all the girls kind of make a dinner on the thirteenth for everybody else. Um, and then Robin's gonna start making everyone homemade ornaments. So that's kind of another so, undertaking. <laughs> seems like an undertaking. It seems easier than sewing, but still seems like maybe she's biting off more than she realized right. <laughs> to take that on. But it's a sweet gesture. Yeah, it's good they each have like something unique that they want to do. So it's a sweet idea. It just seems like a ton of freaking work. But I guess this Christmas in general seemed like so much work. Like this, the way they went about this, I was just like, this looks horrible. Yeah, I mean, like I loved the idea of going to the cabin and having the getaway, but like the amount of stuff they packed, it looked like they were going for a month at least. And like they were moving out. Yeah. I mean, like you just seriously brought your house and then this cabin, I mean, while adorable is not fit for 20 people. (laughs) No, they were packed in there. They brought their own freaking real Christmas tree and all the gifts for 21 people. Like, holy cow. I, and all the food and all the clothes and like warm, like clothes that will be warm. It's different than packing for the beach when you need a swimsuit and like a t-shirt and some shorts. It doesn't take up a lot of room in the suitcase. (laughs) All the snowsuits, all the thing. I'm like, oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Mm. Um, but the next actually like order of events that I have is kind of Mary's in her sewing room, and they, I think they kind of like reenact this scene. Yeah, she's like looking out her sewing room window, and she sees a cop pull in and turn around, and she talks about how she immediately immediately panics. She calls Cody. Her heart's racing. Turns out they were just going to go help someone in a ditch like they went they literally just used the driveway to turn around but she's like very alarmed by this just uh, like presence of the police officer basically i think Um, even in normal times like if a cop pulled into my driveway i would be freaked out too though i mean because you would think like some of your family had gotten like an accident or you know something like you would just think the worst so Mm -hmm. i i mean that would be scary but then knowing that they have an active investigation you're sort of expecting it to happen. You're like, oh, and there it is. So, yeah, that mm-hmm. would freak you out. For sure. Um, and I feel like this kind of deviates then into, like, more of the kind of, again, reiterate, like, historically, when a polygamous family is char- charged or arrested or whatever, it means the family is split up. Christine and her family, her father was raised in a family that was split up. Um, so I guess her grandfather mm. and grandmother were split up. Um, and Cody, the pressure's just like on Cody. Like everyone's just like looking to him to be like, what's the move? Yeah, I know. Cause like it's all on Cody and it's like, that's not, it's not super fair though. Cause he, I mean, I know he's the head of the household as they want to say, but like AJR, they're yeah. all the parents, like they're all the adults. Like mm-hmm. it does feel kind of unnecessarily added pressure on him. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he is just cracking. He's starting to crack. He gets tearful in that yeah. part, you know, describing what happens. So um, I guess that comes up later. But it's just, it's feeling less and less theoretical now, I think, especially with these this article coming out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, basically, we're trying to get away from it all. Have a nice stress-free trip to the cabin for Christmas mm-hmm. so they can not be thinking about... Yeah, and the part that that you missed then is, you know, they have to get their real Christmas tree and they go to, what is it, Matt's Christmas tree farm? Did I write it down even? Yeah, Matt. Matt is the owner of the Christmas tree lot. And who boy are the ladies into Matt. (laughs) They're like, he's so cute. And Mary and Christine are flirting with him. Mary even gave him a hug. (laughs) And uh, she really wants that mistletoe. Yeah, he, a big, he ran like, out of mistletoe, but he was like, "I'll go. I'll make sure to find some in the back for you, Mary." Behind behind the rack, like where it all had fallen down, <laughs> he's like picking up scraps. Is what I'm imagining. Right. And man, yeah, Mary gave him a um, hug before they left, and I was like, "Geez, go home and get Mary a cold shower because <laughs> she is into <laughs> Matt." <laughs> he was a cute guy from my vague memory yeah. from a week ago. Yeah, he was a cutie, yeah. and like you know, friendly. Yeah, like they were, and it was all harmless like they're just having fun flirting oh, yeah. with this cute christmas tree farm guy like mm-hmm. i mean if there's ever a setup for a hallmark film 
That would be falling in love with the guy at the Christmas tree farm. Right? Mm-hmm. Somebody pitch that if they haven't done it already. They've probably done it in six different ways already, but that that means they'll do it again. So the I have, tales I have old times, twist. so they can tell it again. <laughs> <laughs> Is that then we kind of go back into the logistics of the travels? Because oh man, watching this, they have one car that has four wheel drive. Yeah. This is a mountain house in the snow. They have to pack up all of their children. Many of them are still very small children. Mm -hmm. They have to pack up all of the gifts for all these children, all the food for a Christmas feast and like days hanging out the cabin. Apparently they're also going snowmobiling. So they need all need snowsuits and all that shit. Like, I'm just like, this seems unbelievably stressful (laughs) and overwhelming. I understand totally like the wanting to get away and like the aesthetic of the cabin, like all of it is wonderful, but like, wow, it's, that's so much planning. Like, I feel like you're going to be more stressed out than you were before you left when you get there. Are you going to be able to enjoy it then? (laughs) Yeah. In theory, if it was like turnkey situation, it would be magical. And I I think it still was kind of magical. But, and those kids probably had a blast and whatever, but the parents, it was just, it was not, I mean, I guess maybe putting all the work into this was like a good distraction too, but well, it's I like just couldn't believe. When I've, again, talked to my sister working in a school and like, they'll go on field trips and you know how as a kid, field trips are the best. Like, but she's like, mm-hmm. oh man, when you're the supervisor on a field trip, they are not fun. You hate going on field trips because like you're working twice as hard to watch these kids in a different setting and you have all this planning uh, and you have to have lists, you know, of all the kids so you don't lose them and all this shit. She's like, it is not yeah. the same as being a kid going on a field trip. <laughs> like, I mean, any vacation, I mean, any kind of trip, even vacations, like, yeah, we're going to freaking Disneyland and maybe I'll be a little crabby about it sometimes. But it's like, but it's like the amount of like money and logistics and travel and uh, trying to deal with kids like mm. I just, yeah, it's it's you, you really realize how much work goes into everything. Right. <laughs> later in life yeah. um it while but, you're young kids yeah really you have no <laughs> idea um so they're kind of like on their journey to this cabin in the mountains i don't i didn't catch how long it was but several hours yeah I, I thought it was like maybe four hours away but yeah they wanted to leave at 10 a.m but they didn't leave till at least like one and there's a big thing about how it has to be daylight still because they're gonna have to ferry they're going to park at a base and have to use the suburban to ferry everybody and everything from the base up to where that cabin actually is. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, oh my gosh, what a nightmare. And they're like, yeah, it could get really dangerous if it gets dark. I'm like, yeah, you lose someone over the side of a mountain. And if it gets dark outside, like Savannah just wanders three feet in the wrong direction. Right? And like, and like, did you, I mean, the road going to the cabin, I expected it to be, I don't know. I expect it to be less, um, Less like they're going through just like a snowbank uh, to get to the cabin. Mm-hmm. But no, nope, yeah. I mean, it was pretty, pretty rugged. Like, <laughs> uh huh. Like, I'm kind of even surprised the suburban managed And it was it, like, fishtailing and stuff through there. Like, you could yeah. see, I'm like, I don't, I'm surprised they didn't have to get out and push, push the car through the snow. <laughs> I mean, they had to make at least like five trips back and forth to get every everything and everyone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was wild. Um, and then we have this nice gentleman who meets us at the base to like give him directions or whatever. And it, ha- it gives like the subtitle Wes from Rustic Mountain Retreats. So shout out to Wes from Wes from Rustic yeah. Mountain Retreats. Way to go, Wes. <laughs> oh, once they arrive and are like getting settled, uh, apparently there's been a guy with rental uh, snowmobiles just waiting for them all day somewhere. somewhere. They're like, <laughs> he's freezing. waiting in the dark now for us. He's freezing. We got to save him. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, kudos to that guy for having the patience to just sit there. Yeah, I feel like he'd be like, sorry, shop's closed, dude. I know. I'd be like, if they don't make it by four o'clock, I'm out of here, you know? But Mm -hmm. bless his heart, he was still there for him, I guess. (laughs) I wrote down, the cabin looks magical and cozy, but snug. (laughs) Very snug. snug. Especially with all their food and supplies, it just, like, it was just, they were, like, packed. Yeah, like, once they started bringing their stuff in, and then I was, because at first I was like, oh my god, it's so cute, it's it's perfect, and then they Mm -hmm. brought all their stuff in, and I was like, oh, okay, well, it's still very cute, but oh my goodness. (laughs) They have to go retrieve these snowmobiles, and all the adults are supposed to grab one, but of course, Logan comes to the rescue of Janelle, because they can't leave all the kids just (laughs) in the cabin. Um, I feel like, wasn't there a later episode where Janelle 
was on a snowmobile or something and very afraid of it. It is ringing a bell now that you say it. Like him and Cody. Like I feel like those like more and recent. Cody just did a trip together. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely so picture it. I feel like it's not surprising that she's not, not going on the snowmobile because I think that it wasn't something she was super comfortable with. And of course, Logan takes takes charge. Um, sounds quite cold and treacherous. Yeah, they said it was negative seven. Yeah, and it's dark, and they're on a mountainside, and Cody emphasizes that if you go two feet in the wrong direction, you will freeze to death. <laughs> it's like everything's um, so, like, high stakes for them. <laughs> yes, very. Um... But they do come home and decorate the tree. And it's a very sweet. They all seem to have like very sweet like memories and comments about about overall the cabin experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, we take a real hard turn though into then them finding out that the police have turned in their findings to the county attorney. And Cody basically tearfully says when a family is investigated for polygamy, they break up the family. So we've decided to move. We've only told the four oldest kids. Mm. and like that like kind of voiceover over this like sweet christmas celebration is very like moving i felt like and because you can see like they're looking at their kids celebrating together and like it very clearly seeing an illustration of what they could lose you know Mm -hmm. and very much like trying to give them this magical lat maybe last christmas all together because when they move I don't know if they know this yet. I'm sure they can assume it's hard to find a place for all this family to be all together. So they probably know at this time, if we're going to move, unless we magically find the right place, we're going to be not in the same household. So it really does feel like a very like last hurrah. I hope they remember this moment, like kind of thing that's going to like get us through some problem. Some I'm moving is hard. They end up doing it a lot. (laughs) Used to it, kids. You'll be doing it a lot, but. This first move mm-hmm. is going to be really tough. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, it is. It's sad. It kind of hits you in the in the heart a little bit. I didn't see the preview for the next one to see if it's if it's the move. Did you do? Do you know? If it's I don't think it's the, the next move? one yet. I think okay. it's. I think it's two more episodes down the way. Actually, I could be yeah. wrong, but I think it's so. A little ways. So yeah, I guess it's just some foreshadowing then. Some like some big things to come, and um, yeah, looking forward to getting into that kind of. Well, because everything this is where everything really starts to change because like we see now. I mean, like they've got you know, kind of drama with Robin entering the family and having to readjust and stuff, and, and like the jealousies and stuff of the webs. But like this, where they actually then move and they get out of utah this is where like things really start to change for their family and like put them on a path that's quite different from one they've been on before that's true i mean that's really true i wonder i wonder what this would have looked like otherwise if they would have been able to they would move because they can't fit robin and the kids in the house as it is they would move no matter what but maybe into a house of like a fellow polygamist or whatever a former like polygamist home that suits them and it still allows them to be together in the in a place where it seems like it's just, they have that community more available, even yeah. though they're being persecuted. Um, they're still, they're still like more of a polygamous community in this. They have a whole school for the kids. Like there's, yeah. there's more people out there for them. Well, um, that's like Mariah's school, isn't it? I mean, that she has all the other like polygamous family mm-hmm. kids in her school, like her private school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the school is like, they describe it as like a co-op of just playing with families that kind of like meet in people's homes, I believe. It's like almost like a group home school. Group home school, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, they're never going to have that again. They're never, I mean, I'm just realizing we never are in the same house again. Spoiler mm-hmm. alert. But like, this is the last time they're in the same house together. Well, I mean, we've said when we've gone back for the rewatch, like how nostalgic it was to see them all in the big house together. And mm-hmm. like, yeah. You know, it's it's tough, and like the the kids and stuff, like their their lives are gonna change, and the little ones, they maybe get a little less like innocent as, as children. You know, mm-hmm. just they have less. Them. They have less of the like the big kids, the older kids have basically grown up with this family as we've seen it in these first two seasons, and the little ones will not. They grow up basically with their mom and their immediate like full si- siblings. And then, like, maybe, like, close cousins kind of vibe more of the rest of the kids. Yeah. It's just not 
it's just never the, it is never the same Mm-mm. so i mean that's it sounds dark and bleak or sad but um it's hard it's it i wish i wonder what would have changed if they had known now what this was what this would do to them this move that's what i was wondering too at the end i was like i know that they're making this decision like for their family and they're doing what they believe is right and and their intention is to keep their family together and all of that you know, obviously completely agree with but you just wonder mm-hmm. if they could see like if you had a little looking glass to just see the future would you still have made that decision knowing what it is going to do to the family and how it is going to change the family dynamic like, i mean this might be obvious that when you just said that it really just hit me like they did made this decision to keep the family together and they are never together again hmm as of so two dates. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe they should have just stayed. I know. And like, just risked it. But like, I mean, you can't, you, they didn't know. I know. They didn't know that eventually the law, the laws would change. They maybe never would have been persecuted, just kind of threatened a little bit. But yeah. I mean, that's not a good feeling to be threatened either. Mm-mm. Um. But yeah, I don't know. It makes you wonder. I, they, they couldn't have, hindsight's 2020. Mm-hmm. Like, you, they couldn't have known. It seems like this is the right thing to do. It does. For the time that they're in and the choices laid in front of them, I I mean, I probably would have made the same decision if I were in their shoes. Um, It Mm -hmm. just, the way it turns out is not what you would necessarily expect or maybe hope. But no, it's such as life, I guess. Yeah, it does. It just feels so like meaning, like it feels so like this is such a like a passing ships like yeah. weird like sliding doors whatever that phrase is where it's like the butterfly thing the butterfly you know what i mean those yeah. like this moment changed everything yeah it's one of those significant moments mm-hmm. in life and it will make a difference always mm-hmm. so we will see lots mm-hmm. to come yeah so um, I don't really have any like real current events or anything like that. And it's been kind of quite Christine recently had a birthday party. That was, um, what theme was it, like fifties themed? What was it? Oh, I'd have to go back and look. I shared it on the Podligamous podcast. Uh, Instagram oh yeah. Page. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyone's curious, but it was a cute, like they recently had that like murder mystery party and now they did this. Um, they're just having some it. fun themed parties. Yeah. It was a 50s theme party. Yep, very cute. Um, Christine's got the little cute glasses in her dress. Yeah, worth following. So she loves a party, I guess. She loves to throw a party. Um, but otherwise, not a whole lot. Um, did you have a recommendation? Um, shit, I didn't think of one. That's okay. Do you have one? <laughs> I do have one. It's another like kind of left turn a little bit. Yeah, what um, is it? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll I do re- one once you start. <laughs> Yeah, I recommend calling your state senator. <laughs> mm. I um, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there have been a lot of conversations with my gun love. I'll say gun loving husband, uh, where we have guns in our house, um, and he works with a lot of conservative kind of assholey dudes who generally have a lot of strong opinions, and all of them, everybody wants this background check mm-hmm. law to be passed. We're sick of what's happening. And um, and this is what every... All, I'm going to say it. Sorry if I offend somebody. Everyone except for the crazies wants this to be passed. Because it won't, it won't take any rights away from anyone who's not planning on going on a doing murder spree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, or if you are someone who is at risk of doing something terrible with a gun. Exactly. You don't get to have one. I think sorry, we can all agree that's on the way, that. That's the way the world should yeah. be. Yeah, like if sorry, you're a I mean, responsible gun owner, this won't affect you at all. So it'll and if it saves, this is what I was talking. And my, he hates having political discussions. He mm. gets stressed out by it. He doesn't want to be affiliated with anybody, um, any any politician, anything. He just hates all of it. Yeah, and the and I get it. I understand. I mean, that. it's exhausting. Like, so I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we had this conversation, and he and I was like, just he's like, it's not going to stop all of them. I'm like, that's fine. I mean, it's not fine, but like, it needs it to can't stop. stop right. We can't stop at all of them at this rate. Mm-hmm. If it stops ten percent of the shootings that are happening in this, that's 20, that's going to make all over the difference 20. in certain families' lives. Many, many. I mean, ten percent of over two hundred is over twenty yeah. mass shootings. That's at least like twenty-five lives. This recent one was 
21 in itself. Mm -hmm. So, like, imagine if that had been stopped. Exactly. Because this person was 18 and was able to buy a gun. Like, also, maybe we should raise that law, that age. Whatever. Small steps. I'll take any action at this point. I, I know. Just, <laughs> and, to, just to see that someone cares that this is happening and, and wants to do something instead of just throwing your hands in the air and saying, well, thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Sorry, but prayer needs to lead to action. I'm, I mean, it does. It, there's no, you, if you have tools, like I'll, I'll become the Christian preaching person at this point. You have tools provided to, maybe we'll say provided by God. You have the tools that you have a voice. You live in a country where you can do something and you are not, and you're just praying. Not enough, not good enough. I don't know. I don't know what you expect to happen. You already have what you need to do it. God helps those who help themselves. That too. I like, mean, uh, yeah. Like if we're not going to help ourselves here, we're not going to help our society. What does that say about us? I mean, maybe these tools and voices are what he's giving you to do something with. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want to be, I don't want to be this person who's like deciding what God wants or whatever. That's not what I'm trying to say. But like, I don't know what the fuck you think you're doing. If you, if you just, if you, if you think just praying is going to, yeah. without you personally taking responsibility exactly. for anything. So sorry. <laughs> no, but um, you know, what? it needs to be yeah. said. And those of us who are, are sane and reasonable about it are far too silent, I think, compared to the voices of people who are um, more on the fringe about it. So it needs to be spoken about more. Um, so anyone having an issue with that, I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about it. And so. I know, I know we've all seen the videos that have gone viral and all that stuff, but this law, this, this bipartisan background check law is, is being co-sponsored or whatever the phrase supported by 48 democratic senators, one independent and zero Republicans. That tells you everything you need to know about what this is. Mm hmm when we, when I know Republicans, many, all of everyone I know wants this to pass, mm -hmm. but those people are not, they're not being represented then by the yeah. elected officials, if that's the case. So anyways, that's, you take a real hard turn on that, but I think it's important. It, it just, it needed to be talked about some. Yeah. I called Ron Johnson yesterday, left him a voicemail, messaged him. I didn't made the massive mistake or or not just i asked for it but i made a comment on one of his instagram pages recently saying please support the bipartisan uh background check act this is what most americans want that's all i said mm -hmm. man the comments i got back at me <laughs> yeah someone said yeah. background checks are already mandatory and i and i was like yikes that's not true that's not true so you know maybe maybe we should like post some informative links then um with this yeah. episode so people can have accurate information that's not just um partisan one way or the other maybe Red, like some just rhetoric non-biased yeah. links for information mm -hmm. just so people can get informed about yeah. the issue and we can maybe actually do something to stop this fucking shit from happening so or just open up awareness that this is something that most people want mm -hmm. it's not partisan so yeah. Anyways, I'm off my soapbox, but that's my recommendation today because I was just feeling all kinds of feelings yesterday when I wrote this up. So I will. I'll second that. That's that's a good recommendation <laughs> for everyone. Okay. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks if you made it this far through my little tirade. <laughs> um, we'll try to share some links, some phone. We, I I have uh, on my personal Instagram. I did share um, some li links today that I can just add to our. Um, our Podlegamous Instagram page. Feel free to um, follow us at Podlegamous Pod at Gmail, or at Instagram. I promise it's usually not political. Actually, it has never been political. This is the first that uh, this called for it. But this isn't political. But this isn't political. You know, it's not. So. It's it's about caring about children's lives just and about, human lives. Yeah. So. I want the Browns to be free just as much as anybody else. Exactly. I also, oh, anyway, like a tour bus going past my. <laughs> Weird. Um. All right. Well, on that note. <laughs> All right. Until All next right. week.